Hi, my name's Johnny. I was the director and director of photography on episode three of Bloody Cuts, Prey. So the story originated from an idea um, that I first had about when you were a child and um, you used to think there was someone under your bed or you'd go out of the room and you'd come back and you'd think there was maybe something in your bed covers. I um, mean, it's all about the, the, the fear of not knowing what's under your bed. We were quite conscious of doing something a little bit different from the previous two. Uh, we wanted to have more actors, that was the big thing, and um, tell a different type of story, something a little bit out of the, the norm. I mean, the other previous two were very much based around urban legends and uh, a very specific small storyline. With this, we wanted something a bit more involved, something which was a bit more layered. We went with the idea that it was someone waking up after a night out and not really being able to remember what happened. And as that developed, we, uh, we went more into the character of Tom and made him more, a bit more sinister, a bit more of a nasty piece of work. And as the drafts progressed, we uh, turned it into more of a vengeance film, so when the nasty stuff happens, which we'll see, it uh, gives it a bit more punch. My, uh, my job was pretty much to do a first and second draft on it, at which point I then passed on to Joel. Uh, Joel kind of saw what I'd got and then um, essentially did his own write of the same scripts. I think we did about 12 or 13 drafts of the script, so it did take quite a long time. I think we've been working on it for about two or three months. Although it's quite a short film, it does take a bit more work to do writing because of our restrictions in terms of location and budget, you have to be quite creative in how you can tell a story. When you get a script, you basically automatically have a, a feel for the film. And then, whether you like it or not, it always makes you refer to another film or refer to a book or refer to a painting. I was looking at films like The Exorcist just to get sort of the scary sort of banshee feel. In terms of uh, the style of the film, I looked at films like Seven and Fight Club because uh, they use quite nice colours in the film, they're quite heavily graded. We want to do a similar thing for our film. And there's, there's quite a few different changes, so there's a nighttime scene, there's a daytime scene, and then there's also a club scene. And I think we've done quite a good job of trying to separate all of those scenes. And you wouldn't know it, but they're all filmed in the same bedroom. We were using a, a different camera. It's the first time we'd used it, and uh, the camera was the Red Epic, which is uh, a camera being used commercially in, in Hollywood and, and, and all over the world now on very, very big productions. And fortunately, we knew someone who had one. It was, it was great. We, we were able to do a lot more. We were able to do slow motion. We were able to capture 5K images and crop in if we needed to. It was just a great camera to use, and it also meant that we could use film lenses, so we used Arri Ultra Primes for this, which meant if we struggled for light, we could we could open right up on these lenses. Even though we shot over two days, it was quite a technical shoot, so we, we were under quite a few time constraints. So this meant that we had to light quite cleverly and do day for night and night for day in a lot of the scenes. We had to do a lot of flashbacks on the film to explain the story. And as soon as I saw flashbacks, I automatically thought back to Sucker Punch that was filmed recently. It used nice transitions to, to go into another world. And we thought that we could do a similar thing Instead of just flashing back to something which is quite boring, we tried to transition on objects or try to do different moves to transition through to, to give a better look. I had two roles during the production. My two main roles really were as a producer, overseeing all aspects of it up until delivery, and as part of the delivery process I was also the editor working on the film with Alex Purcell to take it from rushes to completion. Shooting on the Epic is a bit different shooting on the DSLR. You're shooting in a much wider space and the images are a lot clearer so you have to be a lot more conscious on, on things going on, on the screen. So everything had to be double checked, so things like the makeup had to be perfect, all of the lighting had to be perfect. In shooting with that particular camera, the post-production phase is very different so we had to use uh, Adobe Premiere uh, CS 5.5 this time around rather than Final Cut Pro. We were dealing with red rushes rather than your usual kind of HC64 Pro Res rushes which uh, are much more commonplace. With this one we were dealing with frames going up to 4 and 5K which um, you know we're talking about you know double the size at least. With that comes that increase in quality and the, the, the camera overall has a much greater look. It took us quite a long time to cast uh, this time around because we had quite a few members to cast. After holding auditions we finally arrived with Fergal for the main role, Jess as the Banshee and David as the second role. I'm Fergal, uh, I'm working on this production Prey uh, with Bloody Cuts and I'm playing the part of Tom. Uh, my name's David, I'm playing Vinny in Bloody Cuts' Prey. That's Prey.
train with an E. Well, I first got in touch with Bloody Cuts when I submitted um, my application to them via the website Casting Call Pro, which links actors and filmmakers together. So they called me in for an audition and hit it off with Ben and with, uh, and with Johnny straight away. And um, yeah, we've been we've connected really well, and so they cast me and uh, I'm working on this film with them now. My name's Jessica Blake, and we're filming. Feel yeah. afraid. Girl slash evil monster. Yeah. Um, so I've just done my last scene as the girl. And I've just had all my makeup taken off, and we're just about to start the prosthetics. <laughs> For the third episode of Bloody Cuts, we worked with um, Lenny Mafex again. Uh, this time we worked with Karen Spencer, who's one of the, the makeup specialists there, and she did all of the makeup application for Jessica for her transformation and also for Fergal during the attack scene. I'm going to be doing the uh, physical effects for the monster. Um, she's going to be shot tomorrow, but we're just uh, looking at the pieces today so we can have a look at what the cameras have to work with and what the director has to use. So I'll take you through a few of the effects and bits and pieces that we've brought along. She's going to have some claws, so we've got some little nail tips, but she won't be able to do a lot with her hands throughout the day. Um, and we've got some face pieces to uh, accentuate her cheekbones, the side of her jaws, and we've got some skin effects stuff. And then over to the side, <laughs> we've got some more skin textures, a bit of gross kind of stretching effect to make her look all monstrous. You can look just like this. <laughs> After our hive completed my basic cell mix in Premier Series 5.5, then myself and Alex Purcell joined forces to work together on the, the cell mix through Adobe Audition. But I uh, did a basic levelling, I did a basic mix, and he came in and used his kind of background technical knowledge of sound engineering to really uh, kind of sweeten everything and to make everything work uh, as well as it possibly could do. Uh, sound is really important on horror and uh, for us uh, we knew that we had to spend some time getting that right. For Prey there's probably uh, around 10 to 15 visual effects shots, some of them a lot more obvious than others, some of them is just simple fixing of particular shots and there was also the more detailed shots like the closing shot um, where we see the, the, the girl, the banshee on screen during her transformation. Um, so around 10 to 15 shots of those visual effects and that doesn't really include the, the uh, opening titles or credit sequence either which themselves were uh, obviously all done in After Effects. It was quite a big crew on Prey. We had myself as director and director of photography. We had Ben Franklin, who was producer. Ben Kent as the camera operator. Rob Gowers as production assistant. Rory Harper as first assistant director. Peter Ford as Steady Cam Op. Andrew Martin as focus puller and DIT. We had Joel Morgan on set as script supervisor. We had Christopher Franklin as makeup. Charlotte Barrett as costume. Catherine Harvey as set assistant. We had Natalie Barrett on props. We had Roy Franklin as best boy, Units as lighting assistant, Karen Spencer from Millennium Effects doing the makeup effects, Caroline Franklin and Sharon Barrett doing the catering, Melissa Franklin as makeup assistant, Paul Barrett as a set assistant, Alex Purcell as visual effects assistant. Thanks to Take Two for providing us with all of the lighting and camera equipment. Big thanks to Alan and Wendy Nichols who let us uh, take over their house for a whole weekend, and SNO Media for providing all the grip equipment. I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all of the cast and crew and everyone that helped support us make episode 3 of Bloody Cuts Pro. That is a wrap! So coming up for Bloody Cuts in the future, we've got uh, plenty of guest directors, we've got some really great episodes and many, many more scares. That's it. Uh, that, that, that was it, wasn't that perfect? Yeah. Right. <laughs>
action. Go for it, Charlotte. 